Ah yes, look at these beautiful Houdini cloth sims. We all love them. They're just so satisfying to watch. I mean, the software should be called Houdini because this is just magical. Uh, hold on a second, I'm just being told that uh, that wasn't Houdini. That was Cinema 4D cloth? Now don't you worry, you're not the first person to get fooled into thinking that a Cinema 4D render was made inside of Houdini. Now you might be asking, how hard is it to get these types of renders inside of Cinema 4D using Cinema 4D cloth? Do I need to bone up on my vops and my sops and also try to think back to when I took that rocket science class in college, but I never actually showed up to it because it was scheduled at 8 a.m. And seriously, why do they schedule classes in college that early? I mean, no one's showing up to that. Anyways, the short answer is no, you don't need to have a master's in rocket science to use Cinema 4D cloth, nor do I recommend you go to college and spend an exorbitant amount of money to learn 3D, but that is a subject for another video. No, my friends, getting beautiful looking cloth simulations inside of Cinema 4D can be achieved in just a matter of a few clicks of your mouse. All right, so let's just get a very simple cloth setup going here. And you can see I have a plane object with my width and height setup and my segments. If I hit NB, you can see that it's fairly lightly subdivided, not too crazy. I'll hit NA to go back to my garage hitting with outlines. And let's go ahead and add a cloth tag to this. So just like the old cloth system, you're gonna right click. Instead of going to bullet tags and going to the old system, we're gonna go to the new simulation system here, go to cloth, and I'm just gonna go ahead and hit play and you're gonna see everything just drops. So let's go in, let's add a collider object. Let's grab, let's grab a donut because uh, they're free in some uh, applications. So let me go and I'm just gonna move this down. And just like the old dynamic system, to have an object act as a collider with another object, we're gonna simply just add a collider tag to that object. So I'm just gonna right click, go to simulation tag, go to collider, okay? And that's all we need to do. So we just need to make sure we are not intersecting because if you're intersecting right when the simulation happens, things are gonna kind of stick. So everything's separated here. I'm just gonna hit play. And there you go. We got this nice cloth sim draping on this donut. You can see uh, the subdivisions, the low subdivisions of our torus objects here. So let's just up the ring segments here. Hit N, A, and now you won't see any of that underlying chunky geometry. And this is looking pretty nice. You can see we're getting a little fong shading breaking in there. We can mitigate that by upping the fong angle there to smooth things out. We can also just you know add a subdivision surface if we wanted to, to smooth everything out as well. I'm just gonna turn off the subdivision surface for now. And you can see that this is looking really nice. I can rotate the little donut here and you can see that this is not exploding all over the place with the old dynamic system you would do stuff like this and you'd have a, a polygon explode out and poke your uh, eyeball out from your monitor it would just it would just it, it was violent it was a violent violent thing uh, but we don't have that anymore because this is such a much more stable system okay and why that is if i go to my scene settings here my dynamic scene settings by hitting control or command D and you'll see the project settings here You can see the old bullet tag. That's where your expert tab was and all the different settings for the old dynamic system where the new simulation system. Here is all your settings for that your your project wide settings. So you can see all these different sub steps and stuff, which I'll get into a little bit later. But here is where you can turn off your gravity and stuff like that. And also in here, you can choose whether you're using your CPU or your GPU. So this whole new simulation system is particle based and why it's so fast is because you can run it on your GPU as well. It's actually programmed to be a system that can run as fast or even faster than Houdini, which is actually pretty dang cool. Now, when you do run it on a GPU, it can be a little less stable, and that's just kind of the nature of uh, running on a GPU versus CPU, but this is just so much faster. Like, if I have CPU going, and we look at this, this is like, all right, we're just kind of waiting forever for this to go. Change it to CPU. Boom! That fast, right? So this is really awesome and nice. And while we're in here, let's go ahead and turn off the gravity and let's actually get rid of our little donut here because instead of using a collider object to kind of move our cloth around what we can do is use particle forces so as i mentioned before this new simulation system is particle based and if you've been paying attention to the interwebs lately you might have seen a little cryptic tweet from the ceo of maxon showing some 
pretty cool looking fire simulations. And all I'll say about that is because the new simulation system is particle based, we shouldn't be surprised to see fire simulations. And if the system can do fire simulations, well, why not smoke? And if you can do smoke, why not water or liquid? So it's only a matter of time before Cinema 4D can do all of these different types of simulation and be able to call upon the powers of Captain Planet with water, earth, and wind, and fire. Not heart, though. That was a really weak skill. Let's go to our simulate menu, go to forces, and let's grab a turbulent force. And I'm just going to hit play, and let's just tweak these values. So let's get a strength of about, you know, we're, we're doing this and we're not really seeing much, but let's up the scale here. And you can see that basically as I'm upping the scale, I'm almost upping like a, a noise that is affecting these particles and affecting this cloth simulation here. So the strength is how much this is getting pushed. The frequency is how fast that like noise is undulating and animating. So if I move the frequency fairly low, you can see it's a little bit uh, slower undulation there, but let's just bring this down a little bit because the one thing I like to do is I like to have different fidelities of turbulent objects in here. So if I hit play and let's bring the scale down super low and you can see that if I bring the strength up, we have this like tiny, tiny noise undulating. This almost looks like rippling water or something like that. So what I like to do is layer up detail. So one turbulent object with a small scale and then one, if I command click and drag with a little bit of a bigger scale. So if I play this again and make my scale a little bit bigger, bring the strength down. Let's rewind that. So you can see we're combining these noises or these turbulences together to get a unique type of look there. And we're getting this really nice wrinkly cloth looking really nice. And of course, to smooth this out, we can always turn on that subdivision surface. And if we wanted to add thickness to this cloth, we would just go and add a cloth surface. I'm just gonna hold the command or control key down, release my mouse. And that will add that object as a parent. And instead of adding some divisions, I'm just going to add a little bit of thickness here. Let's go like 0.25 centimeters to give a little bit of thickness there. Let me go NB to get garage shading with lines. And then to smooth out that edge, what I'm going to do is grab yet another subdivision surface, holding down the command and control key to add that as a parent of the cloth surface. And let's just bring down the subdivision surface to one and one. And what that's going to do is just round out that thickness that is coming from our cloth surface here. So really nice. If we didn't have that, you can see it's a little chunky. Subdividing that smooths everything out really nicely. And we've got this really nice smooth cloth. Now, when we're adding thickness to cloth, it's always important to think of real world values. Like how thick is an actual piece of cloth? Well, usually like a piece of paper, that's like super, super thin. So that's like 0 0.01 centimeters or something like that. Now, one rookie mistake I always see in 3D applications, doesn't matter which one you use, is that artists don't pay attention to the scale in which they're modeling something, or even pay attention to the importance that scale has on an object or your scene. Now to demonstrate how big, pun intended, scale is when it comes to simulations, here are two different sets of objects. The only thing that is different is the scale of these objects. If I select both these cloth objects, you can see all of the settings are the same. And I'll actually get into these settings uh, very, very shortly, but let's go ahead and let's hit play. And you can see that one simulation looks completely different from the other. And like I said, the only difference between these two objects are the sizes of these two objects. So now what I like to do to get a sense of scale of my objects in my scene is grabbing our figure object. I, I name him Bob. So there's Bob, the figure object. He is built to real world scale of like a six foot tall person. So if we go and compare the size of these two plane objects to Bob here, you can see that this smaller plane object is like the size of like a handkerchief or something like that. And this object here is more the size of like a giant king size comforter for your bed. So a big bed sheet. And that is exactly why these simulations look so different. So if you are using a giant plane object and you're finding that, you know, I really need to crank up my turbulence object or my particle forces to make this thing move, it might be because you have a massive, massive plane object that you're trying to, you know, manipulate versus a small plane object that will get blown away by the smallest strength of a turbulence object or a, a wind object. Okay, so if I grab a Bob figure here, you can see that, okay, this is about the size of, if I rewind here, like a comforter, okay? So that's the type of results that we'll get 
in this scene now. Let's just go in. Of course, you don't want to run the simulation with your subdivision surface and your cloth objects. So you want to keep it nice and light. And then once you like cache the simulation, that's when you throw on all the subdivisions, stuff like that. But you can see that scene scale is very, very important. If I shrink this down and hit play, you can see that we get a totally different simulation. Those giant turbulent scales, we will need to scale down even further so this doesn't get blown away like a, you know, like a newspaper. So let me command Z to undo that scene scale. Let's get rid of you, Bob. Sorry. Thank you. And there we go. So scene scale, very, very important when it comes to simulation. Now let's go to these cloth settings here. They're fairly self-explanatory here. Bendiness is just the amount of bendiness that your cloth will do. So if your bendiness value is super high, like let's go to 500, you're going to see that this is going to want to bend and fold upon itself and look really, really nice and detailed here. Stretchiness just allows these particles of the cloth to kind of stretch out a little bit more and relax. Bounciness, it, it's aptly named. It allows the particles to bounce more off of each other. Uh, so if you have this object, this cloth object falling on something, you're going to get some bounciness there. Friction, same thing. It's going to actually have the, have the cloth kind of clump nicer there. Instead of the friction here, I like to actually just grab a friction force here so I don't have to dive into each of my cloth tags to adjust the friction. So let's just grab a friction object here. And you can see there's 10. Now the, the, the friction values and the values of some of these particle forces are a little bit weird. So sometimes you have to up them fairly high, like value of 250 to get things going. I think that's looking pretty good. We got all this wrinkly cloth here. Let's go back to stickiness. Stickiness is the aptitude of this to kind of stick on other dynamic objects. Now thickness kind of creates a little force field barrier around your different uh, edges and polygons here so they don't intersect with anything else. So uh, target length is really interesting. It allows your, your cloth and your polygons and the points to kind of grow beyond their initial state. And you can get some really cool effects and I'll show this a little later. So if we bring this down below 100, this will kind of shrink amongst itself. And if we grow this out, just think of keyframing this. And we got this nice cool growing cloth effect there. Mass is just the overall mass. Uh, if we want this to be a little bit lighter, like some paper, you probably want to bring down the mass there. This will allow it to get blown a little bit harder by all your particle forces here, like your friction, your, your turbulence there. And uh, this is looking uh, pretty nice here. Now let's go ahead and let's get even crazier dynamic simulations here. So I showed you the turbulence forces, the friction force. Let's grab in our simulate menu a rotation force because this rotation force can do some pretty cool stuff. So let me just go ahead and hit play. You can see that everything is rotating and everything's rotating around the Z axis of this rotation object. So if I rotate this upwards, so the Z axis is facing upwards, you can see we're getting this cool rotation there. And this is something you see a lot in like X particles where we got this nice little twist. And one thing we can do is utilize fields to control where that rotation force is being applied to our object. So right now, this is just adding a rotation force and it's affecting our entire scene here. But if I limit this rotational force to, let's just say if I go to the fields here, let's grab a spherical field and hit play. You can see that now it's just kind of rotating on the inside. We can get this really cool spinny cloth that's kind of rotating together. You can see that little popping there. This is a perfect time to cover some of those dynamic settings here. So I'm going to go to my simulation project settings by hitting control or command D again. And in the simulation tab, we have some of these settings here. So you're noticing all the little popping going on. The one thing that's going to get rid of that is this smoothing iteration. So your sub steps is just going to create more accurate simulations. Iterations is going to be an amplifier on that or a multiplier on top of these sub steps. And the smoothing iterations is something that you want to up going to make your simulation much more accurate and it should hopefully get rid of that little popping cloth that we have going on here. Another thing you can do is turn on the damping and damping is just going to remove particle energy faster so it makes an object kind of look like it's underwater and it's also going to help with those little 
popping bits there as well. Now we're gonna get into some of these other settings here. Collisions, we really don't need to up these passes because I'm not really seeing any cloth intersecting right now, but this is looking really nice. Let's go to the rotation here. Let's maybe up the angle speed to like 150, maybe even 300, and we can get this really going like so. Another thing we can do with this spherical field is you make the inner part there a little smaller, maybe make the spherical feel smaller altogether. So now we got this nice little rotation in the center, looking good. Now, another thing I'd like to do is add a little bit of variation to the strength of that rotation inside this spherical field. So one thing we can do is go into our field properties here and just apply a random field. And if I go to my random field here, go to view settings, turn on that viewport plane, you can see that basically we're using some noise. And what I'm gonna do is just like a black and white mask, I want to have this noise kind of adjust the strength of the underlying layer. So if I go to my random field, change this blending mode to multiply, and if I increase the scale, what this is gonna do is it's gonna have varying amounts of strength of this rotation field as it's applied to this object here. So if I go and let's go to my fields, let's go to remapping and let's bring up this inner offset. So we're gonna really sharpen this. And let's actually add in our random field, let's add some speed. So we're gonna have some speed, animation speed on our noise. If we get this going again, you can see that now we have this ununiform rotation that's happening and this is looking a lot more realistic and not so kind of rigid as far as that rotation going on there. So this is looking good. Let's go to the view settings. Let's turn off that view plane. Let's just turn off the stoplights here for that random field. And the one thing I found that's really fun to do is to get even more interesting kind of cloth wrinkling and stuff like that is, you know, this is just, you know, rotating around the center, which in itself looks pretty cool. But what if we wanted to have this look like it's kind of billowing in the wind or something like that? Well, what we could do is on this rotation object here, we can right click, go to animation tags and go to vibrate. And what this is gonna do is like a the wiggle expression where we can add some random rotation values. And let's really crank these up and let's hit play. And you can see that the rotation, that this rotation force is going all over the place. Now remember, this rotational forces axis of rotation is the Z, okay? So the Z axis there. And if we are constantly moving that Z axis, we're gonna get all of this kind of weird rotation, but let's bring the frequency down to say 0.1. And now you can see that the rotational axis is always changing. So we're getting this really cool, nice rotating cloth. And what we can do that makes this even cooler is if we offset this spherical field, off to the side here. So we're gonna still rotate around the center of this rotation object, but our spherical field that's controlling the strength of that rotation force on our object is gonna be offset. So you can see now that we have rotation happening over here. And as this is kind of rotating this way, we get this really cool kind of look. If we increase the size of this, you can get a little bit of that going on and this just looks uh, pretty nice and just something that I thought was pretty cool and like we're not using any keyframes whatsoever here as well either. So we can kind of shrink this down a little bit, maybe move this in a little bit more, but that's pretty cool, right? Like that's pretty awesome. If we just like pause this like here, I'm just gonna hit escape, turn on our subdivision surfaces and cloth surface, let's hit N and then A and you know, do a nice little daily render where we zoom in, apply some really cool textures, add some cool lighting, and voila, we have your render for the day, you mint it, you make 500 ETH, and you retire. Uh, and it's all thanks to uh, cloth. All right, so far I've shown you some particle forces, but one thing that is really, really cool and something that you can really go into a rabbit hole in is using a field force. Now, field forces can do a ton of things. You can basically use fields as forces, it's very aptly named. But something that is super cool that you can do is I'm just gonna load up a spherical field. Now you're gonna see all these little vector lines here and if I increase the strength, you can see those lines are pointing inwards. Basically what we're using the spherical field as is an attractor. 
So if I hit play here, you're going to see that everything is just crunching in and getting attracted to the center of our spherical field, which is really cool. We got this really cool clumping together. And you can see that if I move this spherical field, I can almost be like the Pied Piper of cloth where I am allowing this cloth to follow my spherical field here. So you, you can art direct cloth animation by just having a field force and just moving it around. You can use say cappuccino to record your mouse movements into keyframes. So whatever your mouse is doing on the screen, it'll actually be recorded into keyframes. And I'll show that a little bit later, but this is pretty awesome here. And you can see that I can even do cool effects where I can like pull it up and move it down. Let's go back to the beginning here, we'll push it up and go down and we get this like cool pulsing wave, which is pretty awesome. Now in the field force, we can have this attract or we can have this repel. So if I bring a negative strength in here, let's go back to frame zero you can see that now this is acting as a repellent type of force. You can see how I can kind of like art direct this cloth here as well. It's almost like a cloth brush or something like that, which is super cool. And again, we can go and, you know, make this cool, like billowing cloth, like move this upwards. It's almost like a jellyfish kind of deal. Now, the one thing you will notice with field forces at this point, at least, if I go and bring this up to 250, the turbulent objects are, are not really working here. And it's a thing that I hope will get fixed. But in the meantime, what you can do to add that little bit of turbulence is just throw in a random field in here. And that's going to add all this randomness to all of these vectors and the way that they're pointing. And what we can do is on the field force, let's go and let's bring this to overlay and let's just bring down the opacity here. And I think actually let's use multiply instead. And what we should be able to get is a little bit more random turbulence going in there. And let's actually have this animate there. So you can see the vectors are animating there a little bit. So this is kind of cool. So we have this like a tractor and it's also undulating the cloth here. I'm going to actually set this to overlay. And now you can actually see like the, the moving vectors from that random field are kind of undulating our cloth, which looks really nice. But if we want to have that undulation all over our cloth to act more like a turbulence force, you can see that changing this to max will just totally do that. Now we got this real cool undulating cloth, which is super awesome. Like this is just such an awesome thing. And again, just kind of like, scratching the surface of what can be done with field forces. And I'm excited to play more with uh, field forces here. Okay. Now I was mentioning uh, cappuccino where you can actually record this mouse movement into keyframes. So to do that, we're just going to go to this cappuccino menu here and let me just move this up. And we're just going to hit start real time. And I'm just going to move this around here to see as I move my mouse cursor, all those keyframes. So it's recording my mouse movement to keyframes here, which is really cool. Let me just move it up here. We'll stop. Let me rewind. And if I hit play, there is a recorded mouse movement to keyframes. So this is a pretty incredible workflow right here. Always love cappuccino and how you can use it with all these new features that Maxon is adding to uh, Cinema 4D. Okay, okay, I can sense a little bit of skepticism here. You're not impressed. I mean, I can sense it coming through the monitor. You're really laying it on thick. You're not a, an easy person to please, are you? Well, that's okay. I just want to make sure that you know I've barely shown you what's possible with the new claw system. But before I show you more, we would really appreciate if you would hit, nay, smash the like and subscribe buttons. Doing so really helps us and allows you to get alerted anytime we come out with new contents. So if you're digging our videos so far, consider subscribing, please and thank you. Wink. So let's go ahead, let's clone a lot more of these plane objects here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn off these subdivision surfaces and cloth surface. And what I'm gonna do is just grab a cloner and let's throw this plane object in this cloner. Let's hit N, B to get garage shading with lines. 
And let's change this to linear. And so we have three clones. Let's up this to nine. And let's bring this down a little bit, maybe something like so. So we got a little bit of space between our plane objects. And, and to make the cloth work on all of the clones and not just the single plane object, what we need to do is just simply drag and drop the cloth object onto the cloner. And if we go ahead and we hit play, we will now have not just one piece of cloth, but a couple pieces, actually not a couple, nine pieces of cloth. And we're gonna have our rotation force going. We're gonna have our friction going as well. A couple turbulences here. And if we just pause this here, it doesn't look like we're having, actually we are having a little bit of intersections there. So what we can do is Command and Control D to go to our simulation scene settings. And this is where these collision passes come in handy. So let me just bring these smoothing iterations down. The more you up these, the slower your simulation is gonna get. So just a fair warning. So if you up the collisions, this is gonna be uh, creating more accurate simulations and is gonna try to prevent collisions, but it's gonna slow the simulation down a little bit. Let's go and zoom in here and let's see if that did the trick. So I'll use a little bit of like push and pull. But again, you can see that uh, if I try this with the old simulation system, again, you're gonna have polygons exploding uh, out of your monitor into your eyeballs uh, and you're blind for life. And you just see this is looking super, super good. Maybe we increase the scale of this spherical field that's kind of determining where that rotational force is being applied to our cloth here. So let's let this play a little bit more. So this is looking pretty nice. We've got some nice wrinkles. Doesn't look like we have any intersections so far. Looking really nice. And again, we hit escape, we zoom in, we turn on our subdivision surfaces and cloth surfaces, and A, apply some cool materials, and tell your friends you uh, learned Houdini in just a couple minutes, and this is what you did in it. Uh, JK, this is Cinema 40 cloth, and this is what it can do, right? Stop, stop, stop. I can sense that you're gonna go into the comments and you're gonna troll on the C40 cloth because it doesn't look uh, liquidy enough. It doesn't look Houdini-ish enough. All right, let me just show you really quickly how you can get more detailed, liquidy, beautiful looking cloth with C40 cloth. Here I have a scene where I upped four of the things that actually control the amount of wrinkles that you can get. Number one is the amount of segments you have. So I upped the segments here in the width and height to 200 and 275. The segments were 75 and 100, so we more than doubled our segments. The other thing that controls how much wrinkles you get is just by this bendiness value here. So if we really crank up the bendiness value to 9999, that will allow for way more bendiness of our cloth and way more wrinkles. Now, another thing that controls stiffness, which you wouldn't think would actually do that, is if I go to Control D to get my project simulation settings, the one thing that controls stiffness of your object are the substeps, the iterations, and the smoothing iterations. The more you up these values, the more accurate a simulation you'll get, and the stiffer your object will actually look. It's a weird side effect of having a little bit more of a accurate simulation. So if you want things to be a little more wrinkly, be sure to bring your substeps down. So I believe the substeps default is 20. You bring that down to 15. And make sure your iterations and your smoothing iterations are as low as they can go. You can see that you can only go one on either. You can't turn either of them to zero. Also, I want to remind you, if you do have that jittering that happens on your object, the smoothing iterations will be the thing that you'll want to up. It's just a different type of calculation method for the cloth simulation here. So I have my turbulence here. I got my rotation and I got some friction here. And I'll provide this scene file for you to go and pick apart as well. So let's go ahead and let's hit play here and let's see what kind of simulation we can get here. So we upped the segments, we have a much denser mesh, we have a much more bendy cloth because we upped the bendiness all the way to 9999 and we also removed some of those sub steps. So here is what we have now. So you can see a lot more wrinkles looking a little bit more uh, fluidy if you would uh, say. And uh, we got these really nice wrinkles happening. Here is the rotation with the vibrate tag doing its thing, being controlled by the spherical field. So the rotation's only being applied to inside of the spherical field area. 
We can let this run a little bit longer here, but this is looking pretty good. Now, one other setting I want to cover is damping. So if I hit Control D, if you want to have things look a little bit more fluid, like it's underwater, damping is gonna do just that. So if I bring up this damping value, what this is gonna do, it's gonna remove particle energy faster, so it's gonna kinda of prevent particles from moving way too fast, and it's gonna look like your cloth is a little bit more fluid, and again, look like it's kinda of floating underwater. So if we up that just a little bit, and let this play again, I'm just gonna pause it right there because what I'm gonna do is kinda of look here and see if there's any intersections, anything like that. And I'd say this is looking pretty dang good. And again, I'm gonna go in, let's just up the fong angle here to smooth everything out. And let's turn on our subdivision surface, cloth surface, and our other subdivision surface here. And hit NA to get our garage shading with outlines. And you could just see how detailed this cloth looks. And again, if we tried this <laughs> with the old cloth system, uh, again, eyeballs getting poked out by polygons, but this just looks so nice and fluid. And literally took a couple minutes of setup. Like all you needed to do is add your turbulence, your rotation, no maths involved at all, which is uh, really awesome. But you can see just how great of a result that you can get by again, just understanding what causes more wrinkles and allows for this more type of high detail folded cloth. Now this is just scratching the surface of the new simulation system. I didn't even get in a rope, the new soft body dynamics, and I'm sure rigid body dynamics is right around the corner. What do you think about the new cloth system inside of Cinema 4D? Are you impressed? Does it need a cool name like Houdini Vellum? Maybe Clothify? Sounds like a cool Harry Potter spell, actually. If you wanna download the project files that I've been using in this whole demo, be sure to check the description for that download link. And while you're down there, go and leave a comment and let us know what you think about the new cloth system. And if you've been using it, what are your thoughts on it so far? And be sure to head on over to schoolofmotion.com to check out all of our awesome online courses, especially our Cinema 4D courses like Cinema 4D Ascent, taught by yours truly, where we'll dive into more advanced animation topics just like these, so simulations, rigging even, all skills that'll help you take your work to the next level and make your clients think that you are a 3D Houdini. 3D-ni? Anyways, I'm out of here. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.